Hello! Welcome to Real Frank Movie Reviews. This episode, we're going to take a look at Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Now, we will be talking about spoilers, so if you haven't seen the movie and you want to see the movie first, go see it and come back and watch this episode. My guest reviewer are going to break it down. We're going to take a look at where this movie fits, all the madness of the multi-world, and we're going to rate this thing on where we think the score should be for this thing. All that coming up next. Real Frank. All right, welcome back to the show. My Marvel expert, Niles. Great to have you back, buddy. Thanks, Frank. It's great to be back, man. Always a pleasure. All right, so... Doctor Strange, he kind of effed up this place, this world, right? With this multiverse crap with, uh, kind of fits in after Spider-Man, wouldn't you say? It's far from home. Yes, indeed. Timeline wise, yeah, it's a little bit after that one. Right, so he's got that spell out there for the people that aren't too familiar, and the, there's a threat, and then all hell's going to break loose here. So they've been pumping this thing up. We've been waiting for this thing. It feels like 10 years this thing's been pushed out here. And here it is. So, after all that wait, what did you think of the movie? I thought this movie was the bee's knees. Another, uh, another fan, super fan service, uh, just like uh, No Spider Man No Way Home. You know what I'm saying? It was, uh, it was, uh, it didn't meet up to expectations. You know, just because I, I did say it was going to be Marvel's, you know, best film or whatever. And no, I can't say that obviously, but I, you know, just uh, coming, you know, try to be critical. It, it was a, uh, it, it was up there though. I, I liked it a lot. All right, I, I got to be honest with you. It makes me so happy to hear you say that because I didn't care for this movie. <laughs> <laughs> oh my goodness, I'm mind blown. Uh... You're, 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 you're a hard to please man, man. Your wife has a tough job. She does. God bless her. <laughs> <laughs> all right, so you liked it. So let's let's talk about the pros, uh, all the things that you did like. What what were some of your favorite moments in this movie? Um, I really uh, enjoyed the uh, the surreal parts of the cinema cinema photography when it comes to these you know type of Doctor Strange movies because you know they're dealing with uh you know the whole mystic art side of the Marvel world and I just like seeing all that you know the abstract art you know and the different visual effects that they get to choose you know to uh you know do a movie like these yeah for sure uh, one of my favorite scenes was in the uh America the one that can travel through the multiverse or create the multiverse portal when she mm -hmm. she took Doctor Strange and they were just going through all the multiverses and they were changing like the way they looked and uh, he's all squares like you see in the movie preview and then they're at one point paint mm -hmm. they're like paint figures and cartoon fi that was pretty cool it was very impressive how how they went about that whole scene. <laughs> Oh yeah, I was, I was saying that. That's, uh, that. that's a trip. I don't know if I would have wanted to take though. That, that looked uh, pretty wild. I was gonna, I was actually gonna bring that scene up, like that whole sequence right there, because you know she didn't have control of her power, so they're just you know, boom, 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 boom. You know, different universe, different universe, and it's just wild. Yeah, for sure. Now, for me, there were a couple scenes that took me out of this movie. <sighs> as far as when you, when you said took you out. Yeah. Um... All right, let me let me explain myself here. So in the beginning, when his love interest that he still hasn't gotten over yet, Christine, and she's getting married, right? And she comes over and talks to him, and she's talking to him, and she's kind of got her head head tilted like this. She's got this massive mole. <laughs> That's what I was like. I was like I was like, on her man, face. Was that a mole? That was a mole because I looked it up afterwards because I was so distracted by it. That's Rachel McAdams, the <laughs> actress, right? And she's tilting in the angle where it's like, you know, not away, like down here. She's tilting here and the camera is right Almost here. Like she's trying to show it off. Yes, look so at it. Like, it's my mole's. In the camera. That's right. It's my mole's big scene. I want to show off my mole. And it was like, oh, I've been waiting for this moment forever. Oh. <laughs> 
Yeah. Oh my goodness, why did my mind go through the same process? Like, why did they not cover that up with makeup? What I don't know. I have no idea, but the angle of her face was like right pointing at it, and I just couldn't stop. I was obsessed with that mole. I also, every scene you know, she was in. Literally, try, trying to shove it in all our faces. Look. Exactly. <laughs> That's what it exactly felt like it looked like, right? She was trying to show every scene after that that she was in. Where's the mole? I'm looking for the mole. Is the mole, where'd it go? Where'd it go? I, I was obsessed with the mole after that. I mean, she was showing it off, yeah. and then it took over. Maybe she upset a cameraman or something. I don't know. Her makeup person needs to go or something. I, 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 I don't know what the heck is going on there. And I never well, noticed it before. Somebody got in trouble for that one. I never noticed it before. She's been in other stuff, and I maybe because she had her hair down, or maybe they covered it up. But since it was in the beginning, I mean, it's like, what's going on? Oh, then I became obsessed with the mole. <laughs> yeah, I didn't even realize it was. I, I couldn't tell what it was. Like you know, first time seeing the movie, like I, I'm just looking at. I see a, a large blemish. I didn't know what it was. I didn't know how it got there. I'm like, oh my gosh. Yeah, yeah. So that's where I was with with that kind of me out now spider-man I, I we talked about this and spider-man was just a masterpiece i thought one of marvel's best movies ever we both agree on that kind of right absolutely and and the humor in there felt natural like organic the the lines that they For sure this one felt so forced the humor lines like let's put this line here let's put this line here it, it didn't feel so organic and natural as as is uh, Spider Man. Uh, I mean, uh, I don't even think uh, I would agree with that one, man. You know, uh, yeah, I don't think so because I mean, I, I was in the theater, you know, I was chuckling and everything. I, you know, and, and like I said, I, you know how Disney can get, you know, with trying to be trying to make family friendly movies. So I do understand, you know, where you're coming from. I guess this movie, I just didn't get that particular vibe. That's fair. That's fair enough. Uh, that's just how it felt for me. You thought it was okay. That's that's perfect. I like that. I like that we have different opinions on that. Um, the other thing that I found distracting too is so they're in that one multi world and you see all uh, Mr. Xavier's there, right? Mr. Xavier. Oh yeah, Professor X. Yeah, Professor X, Professor Xavier, and you see all these other superheroes. So then mm -hmm. uh, we see Wanda, right? Wanda is obviously the bad crazy she went wacko with obsessed with her kids we are talking about spoilers so that's that's okay i put a disclaimer here in the front so we're okay <laughs> yeah let them, let them know early don't piss too many of you that's right off. but uh wanda all right now you have these four other superheroes part of this superhero council i forget the the name of it do you recall what the name of it was it was some sort of council or something that he thought oh yeah the, the illuminati yes there you go like that yeah, yeah. okay so they have the illuminati nami and she snaps and they easily die. I mean, you these are superheroes, right? These four superheroes. Any other superhero you movie you watch, takes a lot to kill a superhero, right? You gotta, <laughs> these guys, cut in half, head explodes. I mean, instant, like, these guys, the weak bunch of the superheroes? I mean, what is this, the, the, B, group, the B group of the superheroes? What happened here? <laughs> Yeah, no, I, I completely understand what you're saying. You know, they did get, like, went in that, you know, big battle, the climax fight of, the, you know, the whole plot, basically. That, uh, that did end pass, but with good reasoning. It's because Wanda's character, the Scarlet Witch, she's, like, in, you know, the Marvel Universe, she's an Omega-level being. Like, when it comes to, like, top 10 you know like most powerful characters and just all of marvel she's up you know she's got that she's on she's on god tier level power that's why she was able to do that so easily you know these are just you know humans but she's got you know this omnip omnipotent power okay. and, and she's going to get you know a group of earthlings you know right. what i'm saying now yeah my, there was captain marvel i guess she did last the longest you know she you know but obviously then we see how that ends up all right, it's a valid point. All right, I'll give you that. That makes sense, right? Because she's this crazy witch with the extreme powers. All right. Not as, you know. Oh, yeah, but like, uh, my bad. I, I didn't mean to interrupt you. Just like the, the, the first death of the Illuminati was just so crucial. Like how they did Black Bolt. Oh, my goodness. Oh. Like that that whole Sam Raimi, you know, um, horror element got added to this film like so well. He just, he feels on his mouth. And he all of a sudden, like, she says, you're what mouth? 
He spills it on his mouth. He's like, <gasps> and then he doesn't. He doesn't mean to, but he panics and screams in his own head. Blows his stuff to bit. It was just, oh my gosh, that's just. That was crazy, man. That was a great scene. I'm glad you brought that up because it was a great scene because normally it got, you know, they went a little out of box there, right? Because normally they wouldn't have went so violent there, right, with the head popping type of thing because he blew his own head. No, this whole this whole movie, like this is definitely Marvel's most violent film. Would you not agree? Yeah, I mean, sure, because uh, from the graphic standpoint of showing the, the violence, yeah, usually before it's you're right, I guess. Yeah, I would agree with you after thinking about it, for sure. Oh, absolutely. Like, thinking about even when she rains down on, uh, you know, the same, I mean, uh, yeah, Kamertaj, she's literally just mowing down innocent people, you know, trying to defend their, you know, sanctum and offer what? So she can go see her kids that don't exist in her reality? <laughs> like, it's, it's wild, it's, you know, it just shows how, how selfish uh, kind of that Wanda was being. Yeah, and how crazy is she? She's a crazy bitch. Let's be honest. She's crazy, right? Those kids don't even exist. They're all in her head, and she's obsessing over it. It's, it's insane, right? Yeah, no. She's, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's, some, that's a that's <laughs> girlfriend I wouldn't want to piss off. Oh, man. Talk about someone living in the mental world of their own head there. I mean, that's, that's whacked, right? Yeah, terrifying, man. Another uh, issue I had is, uh, so when Doctor Strange is doing the dream walking with his altered version of himself from another dimension that he found already dead in his world and he's mm-hmm. at the end in the castle and he's like controlling him and they show his face and he's talking I thought that was hysterical like I thought that was funny the way he was talking and the way his face looked like I couldn't take the scene seriously it looked oh God. like wait explain a little bit more just how like how the the uh version of him was kind of moving exactly and then he's talking right through the the dream thing and then i got it on his face so like you know it's his face is all tore up whatever in the way he's talking yeah it was cracking me up it wasn't i don't think it was supposed to be funny but it was making me <laughs> laugh because it just seemed i don't know seemed i couldn't take it seriously it just didn't seem right to me the zooming on his face his face is you know is like zombified like you said and Mm-hmm. I just took me out again. I thought that was was funny. Nah, yeah, I feel that man. He, you know, the, uh, I guess the kind of way he was moving. I, I can see what you mean because I was thinking that too. Like when he was talking, I was like, man, he's like talking kind of well for a guy that has half a mouth. You know what I'm saying? Exactly, exactly. Now, what do you think about Wong's role in this movie? Didn't he seemed kind of an afterthought a little bit, didn't he? What do you mean by afterthought? Yeah, explain yourself a little bit more. Well, he has the power, right? He had to give uh, Doctor Strange had to give him the 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 big magic powers, right? If I, if I'm not mistaken. Not not the powers, but the title. The title. The title Sorcerer Supreme for that universe. Yeah, he had to hand it over because you know he was gone so long during the uh, that five the blip period. Right. Now he just seemed like he was there in the beginning and then gone. He was gone, and they would come back to him for a, a little bit, and then gone again. And then, at the end, you saw him, you know, in his own little, his own little uh, drama he has. It just, uh, I don't know. I just felt like sometimes he was an afterthought. No, uh, I, uh, I agree actually because um, it's, uh, it's funny you said that. I think that's like probably one of the, the biggest thing this film fails to deliver on is. Uh, Kind of showing like clearly what relationship that this movie is specifically focused on because you know first you start out seeing you know how he feels about you know regretting missing out with christine palmer and now she's married to you know another man actually uh ends up being a fan of his so, so obviously you know he doesn't like that uh, you know, deals with, uh, you know, his, his relationship with himself, you know, is he happy, you know, truly happy, and you know, it's, you know, being the Sorcerer Supreme, making those difficult decisions, missing out on the woman of his dreams, mm-hmm. uh, you know, there's, and then there's the relationship with America Chavez, you right. know, it's, uh, you know, showing how he almost killed her in another reality, you know, and it's just a lot of different things that uh, they weren't really too clear on, you know, 
primarily why like what well, relationship was the primary one for sure and i'm glad you brought up america again because i forgot about something that took me out of the movie so you know the part in the beginning where they're in the diner right her and dr strange are talking in the diner and she's eating a piece of pizza in the scene yeah. some of the scenes the pizza the same whole shot thing the pizza's folded she's eating it like a new yorker where it's folded in half right and yeah. in some scenes it's flat like a real slice of pizza that like switching camera angles Dunk, folded and then it's back oh <laughs> full piece folded back piece i noticed that and then i got obsessed with that i was like kept watching that instead of paying attention to the dialogue is the pizza folded now or is it a normal piece <laughs> so i just thought it was a little sloppy yeah. there because that one was pretty obvious because it's, it's just them two and then the camera shows her it's showing her and the pizza and i became obsessed with the pizza no, that's funny, man. Yeah, I didn't even realize that part. Yeah, that moment. So, uh, they, they got down on me for, with that scene because I didn't even realize. I guess I'm a freak when it comes to certain things like that. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> no, man, it's cool, man. You gotta, you gotta be critical like that, man. Especially with movies like these. Yeah. Uh, so, did you like the whole story part of kind of like Wanda being the villain in this? Because that's kind of her role, right? She, she turns into like a full blown. Which, how did you feel about that? I thought it was cool. It was a cool direction to go in. It was just uh, <clears throat> like another big problem I have, but I'm sure they're gonna like resolve it. So I'm not really that mad about it. They didn't like, she didn't really redeem herself. Right. You know, she uh, she did destroy the dark hole from every, you know, universe or dimension. I guess that's cool, but you know, you just, you just murdered a whole camp of sorcerers. Yeah. <laughs> and then you're you're dream walking, you're breaking the rules of the multiverse. You're you you just kill a whole group of superheroes just trying to get, you know, achieve your your very selfish goal like oh uh, yeah, I don't know. I don't know, man. She didn't she definitely that, that wasn't enough. And I don't think, you know, her whole crash in the building in on herself. I don't know if that's, I don't think that's going to be the end of her. So you think but, she's still alive when you saw I that kid's spirit? A better redemption story. So you think she's still alive? Like, they kind of hinted that they could go either way, right? Because we saw like her spirit or that red thing come out of her. Or we saw out of the building or something. So we don't know if that was her or spirit or something. They kind of left us hanging, right? We don't know if she's alive, not alive. She can absolutely come back, you know, because they have the whole multiverse thing going. But as far as like that specific Wanda, like that Earth 616 Wanda, I don't know. I don't know if she survived or not. I don't know if that was, if they were trying to say she ended herself or if she actually did end up getting the job done. Because, you know, like I said, she's so strong. I don't know if that actually worked. Isn't that cool, though, with this concept of this multiverse thing? I mean, it's so brilliant, right? Because they can make a, a character an asshole in this world. Kind of like what Doctor Strange was, right? In one world, he was a mess, right? And, he, and they kind of talk, hint at it. Each world, he was a less of a mess, less of a mess. And then you get to the decent one that's in the current world. So it's kind of pretty interesting how they can do that. They can make someone bad, and then they can be good. So it's like this world could never end, right? They could keep this going on forever. Yeah, that's like that's one thing I say uh, about this show. I don't know if you're familiar with the show uh, Rick and Morty. Uh huh. You seen it? I've seen a couple episodes. So you know, it's just, it's about you know basically Rick and his ability to you know travel the multiverse with his portal gun. Like the reason that that show is so successful is because they have that ability. They can literally do anything they want. They can go meet multiple Ricks, different versions of the show, and they can literally just. Pull any, literally pull anything out of anywhere. So uh, yeah, that's that's uh, that's also that's just a big plus about this whole multiverse thing they got going. So let's be honest, Marvel stole it from Rick and Morty, right? They got they got the director from Rick and Morty where, uh, helping. Uh, he was helping on the show Loki, and I think he helped a little bit on this film too. Because this whole multiverse thing, they hired him specifically because of that show. There you go. What insider info there? Bam! You cracked the case wide open. Boom! Yeah, you man. did it, man. Yeah, they, they know what they're doing up in there. <laughs> they do. So overall, what did you think of this CGI? Did you, you think it was on par with previous Marvel movies, or how would how would you describe the CGI? Because basically, it's a CGI movie, basically, right? 
Oh yeah, big time. You know, I mean, you, you got to with the, with these type of things, man. You know, this whole myth, mystic arts. But uh, yeah, no, I think they did a great job. I think they did pretty, pretty good. I wasn't uh, I wasn't too like off put. Uh, I guess the worst part about the CGI was the third eye, in my opinion. I thought they could have made it look a little bit more natural. So that's my question for you. What do you think the story is with this third eye? Like I. I'm a little confused by that. Do you have any additional information on that third eye? Is that a, I mean, is that going to be him now going forward? If they go forward, he's got a third eye in his head. Yeah, that's, um, it's cause he held, he was using the dark hole. So, you know, they remember when they said anyone who holds the dark hole gets corrupted, uh, you know, there's no way out of it. Okay. You know, even with them destroyed the effects, you know, of the dark hole, <laughs> on Steven are still, you know, apparent. They're still there, you know, they like, just cause she destroyed them doesn't mean they went anywhere. So, you know, now Steven Stranger's soul is corrupted. Right, okay, see, this is, this is why you're my guy, see? You crack things open that I miss and the details, that's an important detail. All right, that makes sense. That third eye though is kind of fucked up. It's a little weird looking. Yeah, I, I, I didn't think I was the only one. I was like, I, I just feel like they could have did a lot better making it look a little bit more natural. Yes. You know? I don't know. It looked weird, didn't it? It just looked like, mm -hmm. hey, let's CGI this eye up here, his forehead. All right, there we are. <laughs> right, right. But, uh, yeah, no, I, I was definitely a fan of the CGI, man. They really did their thing. All right, so with all this hype, all this time we waited for this movie overall were you satisfied with the product oh sure yeah oh yeah sure definitely man i think it was uh, well worth the wait what about you man all right well i thought it was okay uh, that was okay <laughs> i was i was like eh. i want <laughs> like the best way i can describe it is seeing the previews i expected something completely different like I, I felt like I was sold something all this time. And then when I went and saw the product, it was completely different than I expected with the product. If that makes sense. No, it does make sense. You know, cause I would agree. I think I went into the film with uh, certain expectations too. And you know, it was uh, some, it was, there was things I didn't expect, but I liked that though. You know, I like to go in a movie and be surprised. Right. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. I really, I didn't mind it. I didn't mind it. All right, so for an overall score for this movie, I mean, you and I have seen a lot of Marvel movies in these last couple of years. What yeah. would you score this thing? I'm going to give it an 8.5. Whoa, 8.5, man. That's, that's a good score. That's, that's a high score, 8.5. All right, so for mine... Overall, I give this a 4.6. Oh, no. <laughs> He's so brutal. <laughs> I love it, though. I'm sorry, man. Just in my head, Spider-Man was this masterpiece. And I, I now hold that as the gold standard for Marvel. And anything that comes out after Spider-Man, until something comes up comparable or better, I'm holding it to standard. And I just... To me, it wasn't on par, man. I just no. So, you gotta, you gotta, you gotta have that attitude. Cause like I, I always tell my friends, uh, like uh, when we talk about music and we talk about artists and their uh, projects that they you know release, I always say their next has to be better than their last. Otherwise, they're getting worse. That's true. And that is uh, that goes the same for movies as well. Right. I mean, this world is great. I love this multiverse and everything, but. You know, Spider-Man started that whole thing and the way it did it and uh, it was just a masterpiece and like you said with music the same thing right you're only as good as your latest hit right mm -hmm. right all right so but I think you know what uh, real quick uh, yeah you seen the first Doctor Strange haven't you though yes yes Did, which one do you think was better one or two I liked one better I did Really? I did. I liked one better, much better. Oh, I'm not. Hey, I'm not. I'm not actually mad at that answer because just the way that, uh, because you know, it was an intro story, so they had a, a lot more, you know, 
story building to do and tell. So mm -hmm. I'm I'm not mad at that at all, actually. Now the only thing I'm concerned about, like with Doctor Strange, uh, Benjamin Cumberbund. Did I say his last name right? I always uh, I apologize, but Cumberbatch. Uh, yes, he's such a great actor, right? I I think he's great. He's he is Doctor Strange without a doubt. My only concern is, I hope he keeps doing it because he's so good at it and that I hope they're able to keep him on at least as long as they have this Doctor Strange character oh they're they're, they're under Disney man that that money is uh, is gonna keep coming in and he's gonna, I'm sure he'll be happy to accept you see they still got Patrick Stewart's old self right. riding the hover chair so I'm, I'm sure he'll uh, they'll, they'll figure out a number that'll satisfy him that's, that's, that's a very good point Patrick Stewart's been doing that for over 20 plus years right he's been playing Dr. Xavier forever yeah. Yeah, no, nah, he's uh, he's like that's another legendary role, man. Uh, that's a, and now uh, I was talking to my brother about this. You know, we all these actors because they they take so long to do this. You know, this story building, this world building with the Marvel Cinematic Universe. These people are getting old. That's why Robert Downey Jr. is not is done now. Right. You know, he's like almost sixty something years old trying to play a superhero. You know, he's. You get they gotta they gotta put some pep in their step, man. You know it's uh, it's tough when uh, you're actually dealing with the you know real age of the people. You're right, and, and there's a, they're pretty uh, strenuous characters, right? They're pretty active, a lot of stunts. You know it's uh, can be hard on the body, and when you reach a certain age, trying to find those doubles, those stunt doubles. I mean, is the stunt double played more than the actor? I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I'm sure. I'm sure those stunt doubles don't mind. They're probably getting a, a nice little uh, check as well. That's right. All right. So that's our review for Doctor Strange in the Multiverse of Madness. Niles gives it 8.5. I give it a 4.6. Thanks for watching.